everybody. <laughs> now that we have Mina in place, I think we're ready to begin. Just going to wait a few minutes for people to arrive. And then we'll get started. There's about a minute of difference between the time I say something and the time it you hear it. So if you type something in the chat, it will take me about a minute to respond. So while we're waiting, I am just going to thread up my machine because we will be needing that. And in the meantime, if you are hanging out in the chat, please feel free to introduce yourselves. I would love to see who's here. Because did I thread my machine with the right color in advance? No, of course I didn't. Why would I be prepared? My sound, sound is good? Okay, good to know. If there was no sound, I would be very worried. Hello, hello new arrivals. It's lovely to see you all. Please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat if you have not already done so. And let me know if you're going to be sewing along with me, because I'd love to see if you're actually going to be doing this live as I go. Of course, I had to have my tea prepared. Just give it a few minutes for everybody to arrive and we'll get settled and then we will get started. Anyone have any questions before we begin? You're sewing, but it's a dress. <laughs> oh, West Virginia. Very nice. Sewing project currently. Oh my God. Moving is stressful. Yeah. Mona, what, do you, what kind of dress are you making? I'm super curious. I've seen a lot of so many beautiful dresses for the World War II sewing challenge, and it's been super inspiring to see what everybody's making. Hi, Bricolas. Lovely to see you. For those of you who don't know, La Bricolas in the chat is an amazing milliner and makes beautiful hats and other costumey type things. So you should click on their channel. Go follow them right away as well. So I guess we should get started. So today's project, we are making the World War II basket apron. It's also known as a harvest apron in that it has drawstrings that pulls nice and tight so that you can have a basket in front of you to carry 
potatoes, tomatoes, apples, whatever else you're making. And the pattern was originally released by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 1943. I have the link in the description if you want to see what the pattern looks like or if you want to follow along with me and... Uh, That's it. This is also one, one of my entries for the World War II Sewing Challenge. If you want to see more about that, just look up the hashtag World War II Sewing Challenge on YouTube and Instagram. There are so many really, really beautiful projects that have already been released. And this is one of mine. So there are lots of others, including a few people in the chat who have mentioned they're doing something as well. So for this project, if you're going to be doing it with me, you will need about one yard of fabric in a fairly heavyweight cotton or you could use like a linen or something. I prefer natural fibers, but it should be something fairly coarse um, that can deal with a fair bit of abuse. Because it's an apron, it's going to hold all sorts of stuff. And so I want to lay it out so that the long edge is vertical and that the fold is to my left. Now you can make all of the markings for this on a piece of paper, but I'm going to do it directly on the fabric because that's a whole lot faster and I'm super lazy. So if you look at the pattern, it has the grid on it that is one by one inch. So every one of those squares is actually an inch. So it helps us to gauge how long this is going to be. Oh wait, I should probably do it the way that the actual pattern is drawn. So I'll turn it the other way and so I'll have the fold to my right and then it will look exactly like it does in the picture which should make things a whole lot easier. So from the bottom to the top of the apron is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 inches. So I have... The hammer will come in useful later, trust me. I have my trusty quilting ruler here. I love this thing. And I have my chalk marker. This is my favorite kind of chalk marker because it just holds the chalk in a reservoir and it has this little turny wheel thing that will draw on the fabric and it's super handy. So this ruler is 24 inches. So, oh, I do not have enough. So I'm going to do this 24 inches. Maybe I measured that wrong. It's okay. So we're going to do 24 inches and I'm going to mark it at the top. You can probably see there's a nice red mark there. And then it is at the waist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven inches across. And so we're going to start at that line and we're going to go to uh, the way I keep it straight is I line up the edge with the fold, and that way my lines will stay straight on this fabric. So we go to 11 inches, and I'm going to draw across there, but it has it turn up at the side one inch. So that is where I'm going to draw to. And you can use a French curve for this if you want. I am just going to freehand it because I've already done this pattern before. If you have a French curve and you want to use it, you totally can. But we're going to draw from the top corner here. Oh, we have a flappy ear. We might have some paws. <laughs> uh, Nina, what have we said about standing on the table? This. <laughs> Do you want to be on YouTube? You've been on YouTube a lot. Tinkus. <laughs> okay, you can watch. Just just don't draw because I don't, you don't have thumbs. So there we have, I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll try to draw fairly thick. We have the nice curve that goes down to the waistline. Ah, <laughs> oh, Mina, you are a silly. Okay, and then we have the widest point is one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I should probably go from the top because I'm making them shorter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen inches from the top. So if I go to fifteen inches, I'm gonna draw it here. 
and the widest point goes it, quite wide. It, this is meant to be on 150 centimeter wide fabric and mine is not. So uh, I'm just gonna draw it to the edge of the fabric at this point. So I take the line, hopefully you can see it, I'll move it up a little bit. Take that line I drew, line this up with the fold and go straight across. And then I'm connecting the top line here to this corner here, which is in a big kind of curve. Again, you can use a French curve for this. You do not have to, I am not going to. Uh, but I do have it on my quilting mat here so that it makes it a little easier to draw on. I'm not drawing on the wood. So I'll go across. Nice straight line. Actually, I am going to curve that, that out a little bit more. So I'm going to go out first and then down. That way I get a little more fullness to the apron. So I'm going to use this one. Just put an X there so I don't use it. And then we curve across the bottom, which will be the very bottom corner here. So we're going to curve from this point here down to the bottom. Again, you can use a French curve if you have it or you can freehand it to look the way you want. It is an apron, so it is therefore somewhat inexact. Okay, I'm gonna draw along the bottom. Now, the important part is the placement of the eyelets. Um, just so you know, um, if you are typing in the chat, I'm about a minute ahead of you. So if you need, have a question or want to ask anything, then please let me know. Um, but it will take me about a minute to respond. And obviously my attention is back and forth between the pattern and the chat. But please feel free to say hello or ask questions if you are there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the eyelets. So we have drawstrings for this and I can see from the pattern that the eyelet at the bottom is one two three four five six seven inches from the side and one inch from the bottom so I'm going to use my ruler and this is a lovely thing about these quilting rulers is you can do two measurements at once so I line up bring it up a little further so you can see so I'll line up the one inch marker here, right? And go across seven inches. And then here is our first eyelet. And then the eyelet at the top is one, two, three, four, five, six inches down from the top. And so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just line that up there. And then it is one inch away from the back edge. So the side edge is here. If I do one inch away, it will be here. And so I draw another X on that line. So those are going to be our drawstrings for today. And we are going to do the belt with the remnants I have left at the top. So we have our apron nicely drawn out. And this is going to be real fast. So now I am just going to cut on all of these lines. I don't want a seam allowance because I am doing um, the eyelet placement is really important. And you're folding the edges twice over to create the channel that you need for the drawstrings. So uh, I did not include a seam allowance and you should not include a seam allowance if you're doing this. So I'm going to cut this out while I'm cutting. Let me know where are y'all coming from? Where is everybody tuning in from today? And what is the weather like? Today it is in Vancouver, it is a little sunny, a little drizzly, which is kind of standard Vancouver spring. We are in a temperate rainforest. So we get lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of rain. So, 
And as I'm cutting, if I want to improve the shape of it, I can improve the shape. It doesn't really matter exactly what the shape is as long as it fits you and as long as you're happy with it. There are more guidelines than actual rules. And if you were doing with this with a uh, wider fabric, you would have more remnants to use for the waist belt. Uh, for this, for me, I'm gonna have a shorter, well, I'm gonna have a thinner waist belt, which is fine because it's an apron. And so here we have an apron. Funny story, aprons were originally called naprons. They were N-A-P-R-O-N, but everyone called them a napron and people assumed they were just saying an apron. And so it changed. So the word became apron instead of napron. Random historical fact. I don't like this sticking out here this much. So I'm just going to trim it just a wee bit so it looks a little better. Yeah, I like that a lot better. All right. So now we need to make the eyelets. So we have two of them. But we're actually going to have four because remember we have this on a fold and we are going to need to make the eyelets in the same place on both sides. So we have this one here and we have this one here. It's sunny and 28 degrees. Oh my goodness. That is gorgeous. Oh. Right here, the cherry blossoms are starting to blossom and it's so pretty. I love the cherry blossoms and the magnolias and the other apples and flowering trees. It's so pretty. They have a, the Japanese community has a massive Sakura festival for the cherry blossoms. And it's so pretty to go through parks just filled with all the pink cherry blossoms. Just love it. All right. So if you're making eyelets, you're going to need something like this. This is an awl. It is a pointy, but not sharp tool. And the idea is you can poke through the fabric without cutting the fabric. So you don't end up with a bunch of loose fibers and that way you're just kind of moving the fibers out of your way rather than uh, cutting through it. And that makes it more stable. So right along the edge here, I'm going to poke through both layers of fabric so I don't have to do it twice. And it goes right through. So that way I have perfectly symmetrical placement. And then I'm going to widen this hole. Sometimes you kind of have to pull to widen it out on all, all the sides. And then, yeah, you can get the widest edge through. And you can make the eyelets by hand if you want. That is absolutely a valid option. But because I don't have a ton of time to sew eyelets, I am going to cheat. Nope, those aren't the ones. I have smaller, smaller eyelets, which I put down and then lost. Oh, no, there they are. Okay. Oh, smart tip. If your pins come in these little plastic cases, hang on to them. They are wonderful for snaps and buttons and hooks and all the other things. Yeah, uh, Orion, uh, Nuncle is the same one. It was my nun mine uncle, and then it became my uncle, which is hilarious. I love that, how language changes like that. So if you've never used the grommets like these before, they have three pieces to them. The third one is very important, though people leave it out all the time. So we have it, the one that has kind of the neck on it that sticks out. Then we have, this is going to be a hard one to see. This is basically like a spacer so that we don't chew the fabric to pieces. And then we have the bottom. And what happens is when you hammer the, the little neck down into the anvil, the, the neck actually wraps around and into the collar. What you do is you put the neck through the eyelet. Uh, yeah, you'll probably want this to be the outside space. See, this is still a little bit too small. So I'm gonna find it out just a little bit more. So it goes through fairly easily. Yeah, there we go. You may need to pull it over completely so it sits snug. Come on. Come on, little buddy. You can do this. I believe in you. Come on. Come on. Maybe 
maybe I need a bigger awl. <sighs> like that scene from Jaws. We're going to need a bigger boat. It would be hilarious if I spend the whole video just trying to do grommets. I will trim these few little fibers just because they keep getting in the way. Okay, and then we put the spacer on and then we put the neck on and you want it so there's a little raised edge and that you want that to be on the outside. And so we put that there and then these come with a little anvil. And so we're going to put that and line that up nicely. <clears throat> nope, it's going to all fall off because that's how I roll. Why will you not stay on? There we go. And now comes in the hammer. And there we go. We have a nice grommet. And we're going to repeat that three more times. And then that's actually most of the hard part done. So I have my other hole, you can see here, nice and symmetrical. Oh, other fun thing about the English language, if you're at all interested in weird changes in the English language, in England, the plurals of words used to happen based off of where the king was residing at the time. So I can't remember exactly where it was, but at one point the king was staying in a place where they made things plural with E-N. So instead of like, it would be like table in and chair in and everything else. Um, until they moved to London, which London made everything plural with an S. But interestingly, those E-N plurals still hang around in the language a little bit. So that is where children, brethren, sisterin, and oxen come from. Oh, Bricolas, it's sweltering and hot. It's only April. Okay, yeah, I'm Canadian, but still. <laughs> Doesn't feel it should be that sweltering in April. Yeah, I guess North Carolina would be pretty dang hot. Okay, that went really wonky. I don't know what I did there. But I will try to using this guy. Yeah. It'll be a little ugly. But yeah, so next time you use the word children or brethren or oxen, you will know that you're using an antiquated plural that comes from another region of England that is just a residual hanger on in the language from thousands of years ago because English is stupid. Do you want to go out? Okay, you go out. My dog is basically a cat. She's always on the wrong side of every door. Okay, so one more set of rip or grommets to be done. That's the top one. And you can sew these if you want. Sewing them is fairly straightforward. You just sew around the hole about an inch away. Ooh, tore that one a little bit. Actually, that's probably fine. Nope, 
that's good. Be funny if I tore it irreparably while in the middle of a live stream with no extra fabric. Uh, would totally be the kind of gutsy thing I would do. Because I am a disaster human who should not be allowed out in society. It's seven degrees in Denmark. Wow. I guess, yeah, it's probably the middle of the night in Denmark, isn't it? But nine, ten hours away from here. So it's 1230 here. What time is it in Denmark? These are some buggers. No, you can stay. No, stay. Okay. It's 9.30 p.m. Okay, so yeah, you're nine hours ahead. I always remember that London is eight hours ahead. Because I got married in Edinburgh and beautiful wedding, terrible marriage. And I had to stay up until midnight or 1 a.m. anytime I wanted to call them to make plans just to get them when they were waking up. So just a note, if you ever want to get married in Edinburgh Castle, be, be advised there is a lot of administrative paperwork to get done. And you're going to have to stay up really late or wake up really early to do it all. Because what can I say? The UK is a place that basically invented bureaucracy. Um, last grommet. So Mona, I can use my one word of Danish on you, which is tuck, which means, oh no, I also know, is it tiga? The, the cozy, comfy thing that the Danes do that is amazing. Wow, that is ugly as sin. That must have jumped in. Oh well, it still works. From what I've been told about Huga in Denmark is basically you invite your friends over for a Huga and you get together and just hang out with a bunch of blankets and some drinks and be very, very comfy. And that's about it. I did that wrong. Oh, that's why I screwed it up. I forgot. <laughs> I am a dummy. Yeah, I'm supposed to use the... Obviously, you can tell it's been a while since I've made it by hand. <laughs> ah, looks way better. Yeah, there's um, there's two pieces. Oh my god, Mina, I just let you out. You need to calm down. Yep, that is what I did wrong. And Mina wants to come back and hang out with you. What is it, poops? You want to say hi to everybody? Hi, Casca! For those of you who don't know Casca, Casca is another costumer and a lovely human being who did the coolest cosplay of a 1940s uh, rat catcher. The, the character rat, rat catcher, not an actual rat catcher. <laughs> hi, Nina. Jane says hi. Also love the name Jane Cobb. I kind of want to sing the Jane song now. Jane, the man they call Jane. Okay, those are good. All right, so we are done with the grommets. 
And the next part is <laughs> Kiga is very Kigelicht. Sorry, I speak next to no Danish. I speak a little bit of German. So anytime I attempt any of the Nordic languages, it ends up sounding German. So this is the part that is most important because if you get it wrong, you will not be able to get the uh, drawstring through. So we're doing a rolled hem and we need to fold it over once just to the edge of the grommets and then over again. And so not only are we hemming it, we're also capturing the grommets inside so that we have that channel to thread all of the drawstrings through. I'm going to do that all the way around. And pin it. Did I pronounce it right? Oh my God. Hi, Sue. I apologize for my butcher in Danish. <laughs> Going around the curve here, so you need to do a little stretching. And a little folding. So yeah, I remember seeing in a bookstore, I think it was called The Little Book of Fuga. And it was like, how to be comfy and cozy like the Danes. And I'm like, I love this. This is adorable. If someone has the time to go find that and link it, please feel free to. Hi, Kat. The new arrivals, where are you joining us from? We have a whole bunch of the world represented so far. need to find some more Danish friends. The ringtone is the firefly theme. Yes. I live for it. I kind of want to make like a, you know, prairie ensemble just so I can wear it around and say, I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. Who needs to make a shirt? I mean, they're pro let's be honest, there probably is a shirt. Oh, California. What's the weather like in California today? Seem to be all over the map. If you're just joining us, I am currently pinning down the hem, which will also be the channel for the drawstring on this. Interior BC. Oh, I know who this is. Hi, Sue. <laughs> I'm from Chilliwack. Oh, hi, Pam. Yes, I used to work in Chilliwack for many years. It was a very long but very beautiful commute through amazing farm country and against the flow of traffic. I need a. Who doesn't need a pretty floral bonnet? Really? I mean. Watched that series about a million times. I I'm not sure if I still have it, but at one point I had a t-shirt that it said, "Well, sure would be sure would be nice if we had some grenades." And I used to wear it when we did uh, physical training with the army. Let me tell you, the army guys love that shirt for you know many reasons. Though I will say that throwing a grenade is definitely not like it is in the movies. Because you're like, where's the fireball of doom? Because every time in the movies when they throw a grenade, there's a big fireball explosion. And in real life, it just goes poof. And then throws shrapnel everywhere. So for the nerds here, you will be proud to know that... Okay. You will be proud to know that the very first time I threw a grenade... I was waiting for uh, to go, and I, as I was holding the grenade in my a real live grenade in my hands, I started up with "Bless this, O Lord, thy hand grenade, that with it thou mayst blow thine enemy to tiny bits in thy mercy." 
and the the Bay NCO who was with me, who was the person supervising me and making sure I didn't blow myself to tiny bits. He said, to three thou shalt count. <laughs> it was so perfect. It was the most amazing moment. He was uh, British as well, so he completely got the humor. It was one of the highlights of my entire military career. One, two, four. I mean, three. Cat, you should be doing some mending. Well, feel free to grab some mending. Mend along while we're, well, while I'm sewing. Is anyone actually sewing along or? What's everyone making right now, if anything? You're dead. <laughs> Sue, I'm glad you like it. You know, I will never waste an opportunity to do something needlessly nerdy. <laughs> Let your nerd flag fly. <laughs> I, I very often do. I'm always a fan. Oh, I have the greatest idea for a cosplay. And if any of y'all steal this, I'm going to be mad. So Think Geek, back when they were still around, made a, uh, a hat of Tim the Enchanter. And it was like soft, plushy horns, the big, like, curly horns that he wears. Uh, if you don't remember, he's the one who, like, leads them to the cave of Tyre Banach with the evil, evil killer bunnies. And so when I saw these plushy horns, I'm like, oh, my God, I have an idea. I was going to get the plushy horns and they make the killer bunny slippers. Um, and uh, I was going to get the killer bunny slippers and the plushy helmet or plushy hat with the plushy horns. And then I was going to make a bathrobe that was kind of like brown and purple the way his robes are and go around with a coffee mug of uh, the holy hand grenade of Antioch. And it would just be Tim the Enchanter in the mornings. I thought that would be the most hilarious cosplay. Aw, Sue, you're the best. Every I'm an opera singer and a musical theater nerd. I burst into song constantly. I have a song in my head every moment of every day, and I'm not mad about it. Oh, Ryan, you're making a market bag? Oh, I love those. Yeah, the, the big kind of wide net ones. Those are super cute. Okay. This is basically the longest part of this, and it's one of the only scenes you have to do in the whole thing. Yeah, someone said, if you don't randomly burst into song at inappropriate times, then we can't be friends. I'm like, I feel that deep in my bones. Because who doesn't randomly burst into song all the time? Yes, if you have not gone to follow Crafting with Casca right now, you should all go follow Crafting with Casca because she is another amazing human who makes beautiful, beautiful costumes and cosplay and other beautiful sewing things. The Blue Canary Nightlight? I don't get the reference. What's the Blue, Cla uh, Blue Canary Nightlight from? <laughs> okay, so to explain Jane's comment, I, well, Jane's name in real life is Sue and I met Sue because I am a choir director and uh, she joined my choir way, way back about almost, I guess, almost 10 years ago now. Um, okay, so what I'm doing next is I'm just going to sew on the channel. I'm going to sew as close to the edge as possible and miss all of the, uh, miss all of the grommets. Yes, I am going to sew over my pins. I am, I am evil. That's just me. And because this is going around curves, I like to keep some tension on the fabric so we don't end up with puckers. So 
but I don't think I'm that scary of a choir director. I thought I was the nice one. Just don't talk in my class. Pinky sold it. Oh, I don't know. They might be giant, so I don't get that reference, but fair. Ask, are you referring, referring to me sewing over pins? <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Ricolos is with me. I am evil. Also lazy. Actually, apparently in the... I know I'm misthinking too. Apparently in the Sewist alignment chart, I am a chaotic neutral. Kind of fits with my life. Because I will start with the pattern <laughs> um, and then be like, no, I don't like this. I'm changing everything. I do so over pins, though. Oh, shoot, I think I lost it. Me. <laughs> okay, I am a professional opera singer and the shower is still my concert hall. Ooh, I think you're giving me a bad rap here. You're making everyone scared of me. Oh, okay, that's fair. I'm sure we missed that. <laughs> if only pin curves parallel? Oh, that's cool. I would have never thought of that. Accidentally sew over pins. Yes, I am very accidentally sewing over pins. That's a lie. I sew over pins all the time. I'm just a bad person. Yeah. I mean, to think of it, sewing over curves in parallel makes a lot of sense. Professional unemployed singer. Orion, what are you saying? I'm very curious. Aren't all professional singers unemployed right now? <laughs> Isn't that the thing? Anyone has sing along, sew along? Oh my God. I don't know, but do we want to do it now? We could make this happen. I'm usually singing when I'm sewing. If I sing, will y'all join me? And if so, I need some requests. Oh my God. Ella Fitzgerald, Julie Lennon, Cass I, I do like me some Weird Al. I love me some Ella Fitzgerald. So that is that. Do, 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 do. And we're going to make the fastest waist belt of all time as soon as I get the pins out of this guy. 
Okay, if we're gonna do a sing along so long, we need to pick something. I recommend Broadway. I know just about everything that's ever been done on Broadway. So give me some recommendations in the comments and we'll do a sing along so along. Okay, so for the waist belt, get out there. I have just this amount of fabric left, so that is what we're gonna make the waist belt out of. And also, because I am a quilter, I am using the fabulous rotary angled, what is this, the ergonomic rotary cutter, which is the easiest thing in the whole world to use, way better than every other rotary cutter. So I'm just gonna cut off the salvage here on a straight line. Sometimes need to do it twice. <laughs> Memory from cats, really? Oh God, hang on. I have to look at the lyrics because there's like three verses to that and I don't remember them all. Um... Okay, any other suggestions before we start on memory? To sing, y'all better be singing along with me or I'll, I'll know. Billy Holiday Jeepers Creepers. I do like that one. Um, a left-handed one? I don't know. I'm, I'd be willing to bet they make a left-handed one, but uh, you'd probably have to special order it. Okay, so I'm bring that up there and then cut off a salvage here. Okay, let's try it. I am just guessing at the key right now. Oh, before I start singing, I'll just mention, I'm gonna cut this into two pieces because otherwise it will not be wide enough for my waist plus um, ties around the back. So I'm gonna cut this in two, fold it in half, sew it together, or sew the two of them together, then sew it together and flip it inside out and then we will have a waistband. Let's see how much it is. Oh, perfect, four inches. So this is gonna be a perfect two inches. All right, let's do this. Midnight, not a sound from the pavement. Has the moon lost her memory? She is smiling alone. In the lamplight, the withered leaves collect at my feet. And the wind begins to moan. Memory all alone in the moonlight. I can dream of the old days. Life was beautiful then. I remember a time I knew what happiness was. Let the memory live again. I'm going to skip a bit. Burnt out tents of smoky days. The pale cold smell of morning. Street lamp dies another night is over another day is dawning here we go touch me it's so easy to leave me oh, should have warmed up Ever. Whew, that was too high. Chicago. Oh my god, cavalry is awesome. 
you welcome to cabaret or cabaret music. Oh my god. I would do that one where there's way too much talking because he just does the the intros. It's like this is Victor or Bobby and Victor. I'm not a soprano, I'm a mezzo. <laughs> I just have a I have a lot of high notes. Um here, let's do all that jazz. That one I love. I'm definitely not a soprano. Oh my god. Um yeah, you can join me in on all that jazz. That one's nice and low. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz, start the car. I know a lovely spot where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all that jazz. I'm gonna skip the little chorus there. So lick your hair and wear your buckle shoes. And all that jazz, I hear that Father Dip is gonna, <clears throat> is gonna blow the blues. And all that jazz, hold on, hon, we're gonna bunny hug. I got some aspirin down at United Drug. In case you shake apart and want a brand new start to do. That jazz. <laughs> then bridge. Oh, you're gonna see her. She's a shimmy shake. And all that jazz. Oh, she's gonna shimmy till her daughters break. And all that jazz. Sure, we better park her girdle. Oh, her mother's butt a turtle. Is she here? Her baby squeal to do that jazz. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have a waist belt. <laughs> so if you've never done this before where you turn a waist belt inside out, this is my method. If you know a better one, please let me know. <coughs> Ooh, I really should have warmed up before doing that. Holy smokes, my voice is unhappy. I definitely don't have an opera rehearsal this afternoon. That's fine. Um, so uh, the safety pin on the end, I prefer a big chunk in one. I find it's easier to pull stuff through and then we feed it through and then just keep, uh, the first one is the hardest to get through. There we go. Just keep going through, pulling it through and so on. That make me sweat. All right, any other requests while we finish off the waistband? What do we saw? Cabaret, I don't know. A lot of the cabaret songs are kind of like ensembles. Other than, uh, uh, what's the one that Sally Boggs sings? Well, cabaret, actually, yeah, she sings cabaret. Guys are making me work for him here. Okay, but tell me you were all singing along, right? This live is. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God. Any opera requests better be like mezzo stuff because. Whew, if I have to do some like crazy high soprano. To Oh God. Um, isn't that a duet though? Is it tonight? Let me see. Another soprano one, y'all. Yeah, that's a duet. I can't sing a duet. Um, oh, I could have danced all night. That one. Okay, that one I have to look up the lyrics because there's a bazillion. Uh, 
one of the things I hate when the verses are all really, really similar each other to each other, um, with just slight changes each verse. Because then I like forget which verse are we on, and I just mess them all up. I they all intertwine and become the same. Um, I'm not going to do the intro. Okay. <laughs> Somewhere, isn't that also a duet? Anyway, I could, I, I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night and still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I've never done before. I'll never know what made it so exciting. Why all at once my heart took flight. I only know when he began to dance with me. I could have danced, danced, danced. Night. Not doing every verse. Just like Ted. <laughs> Oh, this is being a pain in the butt. Why are you like this? Come on. So where is also a duet? There we go. Okay. This is my key. Oh, good. I'm just guessing at the keys at this point. So if it's the wrong key, then schmack. <laughs> I mean, I'm disabled and literally walk with a cane, so I definitely would not be dancing all night. So no worries there. Something from Carmen. Oh, God. Um, oh, I'm not going to do habanera. Everyone's heard habanero a million times. I've sung habanero a million times. Um, Kat, I bet your voice does go up that high. <laughs> Orion, I strongly approve. Okay, something from Carmen. Let's do Sigidia. Sigidia is her second aria where she's in prison and trying to convince the guard to let her go free. And she is seducing him to come with her into the mountains. Um, that one I do need the right key for otherwise. Actually, no, I think I know it. Credit on for the Shame on the mini la fastia. She don't say the sega die water, du manzania. She did shame on the mini la fastia. Then it changes key. Oui, mais tout ce long sonné, et les vrais plaisirs sont à deux. Donc, pour me tenir compagnie, je me donne mon amour. Mon amour, il est au diable. Je l'ai mis à la portière. Mon beau-père est consolable. Mon ami, colonel. J'ai des galantes à la douzaine. Mais ils ne sont pas à mon gré. Voici la fin de la semaine. Qui veut m'aimer? Je l'aimerai. Ah, mon âme, allez prendre. Vous arrivez au bon moment. Je n'ai guère le temps d'attendre. Car avec mon nouvel amant, prenez l'emporte de sa mine. Chez mon ami, il n'a Nous danserons la sègue d'y boire du manzanilla. Oh, awesome since I did that. Okay. How do I... Oh my god. Frank, you have the worst timing. This is not the time. 
So Joel, you had a question about why I was turning it inside out. Um, the reason for me is just because this phrase, like nobody's business. Um, oh, I sewed this the wrong way up. Oh, anyway. So what I'm doing, um, I don't mind having a thinner waistband. I just don't want to deal with all the fraying from the cotton. So uh, what I'm doing to finish the edges is I just turn them inside a little, single pin, and sew over the edges. This is a very lazy way of finishing. And then I'm gonna do some more sewing over pins to make Casca crazy. <laughs> Yes, I sew over pins. I'm an evil, evil person. It's just in my nature. What is that? The one with the, the frog and the scorpion or whatever it's called? Okay, Bricolas, thank you so much for joining. And if anyone has not followed Love Bricolas as well, please go to their channel and watch some amazing millinery, but lots of other stuff. If you want to see beautiful, beautiful hats, go follow Love Bricolas right now. And then come back here. Okay, so I am going to, normally I would iron this, but I don't have my iron here and we're doing this in a hurry and I already have one of these finished. And so we're just, I matched up the center to here and we're just going to kind of stretch it out and pin it uh, seam side to the raw edge here. And sew it down. Yes, I am going to sew over more pins. <laughs> Mine is an evil laugh. Your machine is in storage. What kind of machine do you have, Kat? I've been watching so many of these new, brand new fangled sewing machines that have like self-threading. And I thought the self-threading is fancy, but I also realized that would be such an amazing tool for um, people who have uh, hand-eye coordination issues or vi vision issues um, to be able to sew so much easier. Like what a great access accessibility function. Heavy duty singer, awesome. Yeah, I have the uh, Genomi here, which I've had for years and years, but it's awesome. Works like a dream. I also have an industrial singer just over there. Um, I go for it so over your pins. Thank you, Joel. I appreciate your permission. Yes. I will admit I have sewn over my pins since I was in home at classes in grade seven, and I never got over it. 10 layers of denim. Yeah, my industrial can do the same. I think I've done like... Uh, I think I did like 10 layers of crushed velvet and that's what everybody was swooning over because uh, crushed velvet, especially stretch velvet is such a pain in the tuchus to sew. Like, oh my God, I hate sewing crushed velvet and especially stretch velvet. Soprano part, no! No, I don't even, I barely remember that one. That was like 10 years ago I'm saying that. Okay. So just sewing down the waistband.
and we are almost done. All we have to do is the drawstrings. We have the other uh, sing along requests. You'll need to learn some modern musical theater. Some, some <laughs> There's so many good modern pieces out there that are just amazing. If you haven't already, go listen to The Color Purple, the musical, especially the recording with Cynthia Erivo, because Cynthia Erivo is a goddess who can sing anything. All right, so, yep. so now we have an apron with grommet here and grommet here, and then here and here. So we need to add the drawstrings into it. And I have two. <laughs> we need to talk. So I have this cording. You can use two cords. So Orion, the 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 in inside joke behind that is me and a friend of mine actually did a choir arrangement of Dr. Horrible's sing-along vlog that I had my choir sing like 15 years ago now and Sue was in the choir. I'm pretty sure when we did that. Um, so uh, yeah, we did spent a very long time making a choral arrangement of Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. I'm not seeing that right now, Sue. Um, okay, so I cut off a um, 30 inch strip of the cording and <laughs> Okay, Sue, you can <laughs> That's not how it works. You know what I always say, this is not a democracy or as they say in the military, we're here to defend democracy and not practice it. Okay, so normally if I was using a uh, synthetic cord, I would burn the ends and melt them in, and then into a small point. But because this is cotton, okay, so you can sing it in the comments. Because this is cotton, I'm gonna use tape. So I just have a tiny bit of packing tape that I'm gonna tape around the ends. Oh, Mina's gonna join us again. Hi, Mina. And I'm just gonna tape it around the edge and just a little bit over. <laughs> and squish it tight here, which helps me grip it a little bit better. Now this, these grommets are really small, so I can't use my big honkin' safety pin. So I'm gonna use a little safety pin through our here and you can start at either end, it's totally fine. So I'm starting at the bottom one and <laughs> Orion, you are so correct. I remember once, <sighs> yeah, getting it through is always the first one is always the problem. There we go. Um, once I was working on a, uh, so I'm not joining on. Uh, working on a Canadian military base and they had just an absolute ton of American artillery working there as well. And they were having a Canada versus U.S. baseball game um, where we absolutely got our butts handed to us because, you know, playing Americans in baseball was probably not the best idea. Should have done hockey, but it was the middle of the summer. And they asked if they had someone who could sing the Canadian national anthem and I volunteered. Um, and then. Uh, they put over the loudspeaker, can we get someone to come sing the American National Anthem? And then very long silence, like five minutes. Is there anyone who knows all the words, the American National Anthem? And this is like 10,000 uh, American army men. And then five minutes later, is there anyone who knows all the words, the American National Anthem? And eventually I just went up and I'm like, I know all the words, the American National Anthem. And they're like, really? How do you know that? And I'm like, I've been to a hockey game before. And so of all of the Americans on the base, the Canadian was the only one who knew all of the words to the American national anthem. I'm still kind of proud of that. 
Word. Okay. Got this through all the way. Now, there's two ways of doing the drawstrings, either of which work really well. I've tried them both. And so with this one, I went the wrong direction. Well, I'm a dummy. Okay. <laughs> of course I did that. <laughs> Jose, can you see? Yeah, I've, I've heard that one quite a lot. It's also an incredibly difficult one to sing of all national anthems because the range is so huge. Um, it starts, oh, Jose, can you see? And the highest note, and the rocket's not there. So you have to have a heck of a... <laughs> Hi, Kayla. Yes, you did miss the Dr. Horrible conversation. I'm sorry, but you're here in time to uh, hear us talk about the American National Anthem, which is also the only national anthem that ends in a question, which is kind of funny. Now everyone's revising the words in their heads. Wait, does it end in a question? Is that real? Yes, it is. Is, is oh, say, does that Star Spangled Banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave? So it is, in fact, a question. Words are simple and no one's going to, yeah, the, the words and the range are very simple. So for anyone who doesn't know, McNerdy Makes is another costumer who does all sorts of like fun, mostly medieval, but also a lot of recycling stuff, which is amazing. And you should go follow her right now. Um, she made a bunny hutch like uh, to look like uh, Hobbiton with like, and they call it the Hobbit hole, which I just love. <sighs> you learned the British anthem. Really? Oh, the British anthem. Blah, blah, blah. The British anthem is a super, super easy one too. Someone to watch over me. Oh, I love that one. Uh, now that's another one I haven't sung in decades. Okay. For those of you who are just joining, apparently this is going to be um, a sing-along, sew-along. So, uh, while I am threading these drawstrings, we will, we will do a sing-along. So the next request is Someone to Watch Over Me uh, by George Gershwin. Well, George and Ira Gershwin, actually. If you do not know, Ira Gershwin is George Gershwin's brother and lyricist. So most of the stuff they did, they did together. Um, how does that one start? There, there's a saying old says that love is blind. Still, we're often told, seek and ye shall find. So I'm going to seek a certain lad I've had in mind. Looking everywhere, haven't found him yet. He's the big affair I cannot forget. Only man I ever think of with regret. I'd like to add his initial to my monogram. Tell, who? Tell me, where is the shepherd for this lost? Lamb. There's somebody I'm longing to see. I know that he, or I hope that he, turns out to be someone who watch over me. I'm a little lamb who's lost in the wood. I know I could always be good to one who will watch over me. Although he may not be the man some girls think of as handsome, to my heart he carries the key. Won't you tell him, please, to put on some speed? Follow my lead. Oh, how I need someone who watch over me. Oh, 
Oh, Casca, the British national anthem is just God Save the Queen. Although the unofficial British national anthem is Jerusalem. And if you're British or, you know, British expat, <laughs> you will know Jerusalem. And did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's pastures green? And the hilarious thing about Jerusalem, if you've never heard it, like almost every British person I know knows it by heart and gets all teary eyed when they sing it. And it's about this myth that Jesus actually showed up in England and walked around. So did those feet in ancient times uh, was Jesus walking upon England's pastures green. Um, so they think that he showed up there and just hung out. Um, there's another uh, theory that Jesus went to Japan and lived there until a ripe old age. Uh, that I think it was, they said his, no, oh, I can't remember. And he had a brother and there's a shrine in Japan, which is kind of funny. Like everyone thinks that, nope, Jesus showed up here. Nope, he showed up here. Ugh. Oh my God, Barrett's privateers. I just saw that. That's a good choice. Now, okay, y'all got to join me on the chorus. This one has like 12 million. Uh, has a million verses because it's a sea shanty. So this is kind of the like the most quintessentially Canadian sea shanty. Uh, if you've never heard it, you're about to hear it, but uh, this will be would be sung in every pub, uh, mostly in the Maritimes, but across Canada too. Oh, this one's low. Okay, guys, are gonna kill my voice, and my director is going to yell at me when I get there. Oh, the year was 1778. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. A letter of mark came from the king to the scummiest vessel I'd ever seen. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tear. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. Oh, well, Sid Barrett cried the town. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Uh, for twenty brave men, all fishermen, who would make for him the antelope's crew, God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no shoo, shed, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. The antelope sloop was a sickening sight. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. She'd enlist to the port and her sails in rags. And the cook and the scuppers with the staggers and jags. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier. The last of Barrett's privateers. Okay, I'm not doing the rest of the lyrics because I'm from the setting now. <laughs> I do know some Tom Lair. Color Man is also awesome. God Save the Queen. Yeah, uh, it was actually the God Save the Queen was used for My Country Tis of Thee. Literally as a middle finger to the British. They're like, screw you, we're taking your national anthem and rewriting the lyrics. It's, land. it's like every American thinks this land is my land is an American song, but it's actually been like re rewritten by dozens and dozens of countries. There's a Canadian one too. Uh, this land is your land, this land is my land, from Bonavista to Vancouver Harbor, to the Arctic Circle, to the Great Lake Waters, this land was made for you. Oh, that is the wrong key. Wow, okay. Anyway, so we are pretty much finished. Now, there's two ways of doing the drawstrings. The way I did it here is a single drawstring, and that way when you pull it, it will just hold itself tight. Uh, I put knots in the ends just so that you can't pull them through. What I also do is I will dip these in wax so that they don't fray and they get a little chonkier. Um, but if you pull them both, you get a nice basket. And it'll actually really hold. Like, I can't pull that apart really well. It actually takes a fair bit of effort. I almost pulled that right out of the hole. So the second way you can do it is you thread one, 
Now I need to think about this. So you'll take two drawstrings and you'll thread one through from the bottom and stop just short of the top. And you'll sew it in to the channel with something like a bar pack stitch. And then you'll thread one in through the top and thread it all the way to the bottom, just short of the bottom and hold that with the bar tack stitch. And that way when you pull on both ends, it'll pull themselves together. Um, this channel is fairly small and this cord is fairly large. So I opted to do this method, which is a little bit easier. And this thread, or sorry, this cording is cotton. So I can't not, well, I can knot it, but I can't burn it. Otherwise it'll just turn to ash. So I'm just gonna cut these off. And like I said, I dip them in beeswax just so that they don't fray. And then I'm gonna knot over it just. My country's tired of me. <laughs> I love it. I love it, that is great. And now we have a finished apron. So the moment you wanna use it for the basket, it works perfectly fine as a regular apron. I'm gonna, I press that down so it doesn't stick up like that. So it actually sits the right way. But when you want to use it as a basket, you just pull the drawstrings closed. I've already knotted them and you have a very lovely basket for holding all of your for me, gardening or harvesting things. Now, what I do is when I'm using it as a basket, I'll just tie this in a bow so it holds even a little closer and I'm not fussing with the strings. And then I just throw the strings inside. And so I have a nice, nice basket there for holding. I should probably get my hand out of the way of the camera. So have the nice basket there for holding all of my things. Oh God, is it my country's tired of me? I'm going to Germany to see the king. The king is Donald Duck. He drives a garbage truck. I'm going to Germany to see the king. I love it. He drives a garbage truck. Yeah, I, yeah. So that is the basket apron. We are all done. <sighs> so are there any questions about this or just random questions about me or the channel or the weather in Vancouver or... Uh, Kayla, if you want to know more about the arbutus tree or throwing grenades, since we've covered so many topics today. Thank you. It is designed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. If you want to make one of your own, the link is in uh, the description of this video below. Uh, it came from a farmer's manual that was released a while back. and. Uh, it is, where, where was I going with this? Um, I actually found the original one and, and was able to get a hold of it. And if you want to join my coffee, which is also linked below, it's just code-feed.com slash so biased. I have the entire booklet with all of the patterns available, which includes lots more aprons, dresses, and other things from the U.S. Department of Health and Agriculture, including... Um, a kneeling apron so the bottom half of the apron is made with like a waterproof material so you can tuck it under your knees as you're gardening so that you don't get your knees muddy and gross you can also put padding in there um if you're kneeling like on a uh, rocky surface so uh, I have a whole bunch more free patterns on my coffee, as well as some knitting patterns from the Knitting with Victory series. So please feel free to go there if you want anything else. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe. I would love to see more people. Um, please leave a comment in the video as well and a like. Uh, how many hundreds to commission a warm winter cloak and hood? Uh, depends what you want it made of. The wool that I used for my princess coat was about $30 a yard and took about eight yards. Actually, it was like 40 bucks a yard and took like eight yards. So, uh, and also about 100 hours of sewing. So, depends what you want and what you want it made of. But I usually charge about $30 an hour for sewing plus materials. So, uh, you can do the math on that one. Yes, please leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you can, please leave a comment on the video and share it with other people. It means a lot to me and helps the algorithm pick up the videos. Um, yeah, 
ouch is right. That was definitely a labor of love. I have to replace the lining too, because the lining is starting to go, but thankfully I can do it over the summer when I don't need it. All right, any other questions or anything else anyone wanted to know? Any last singing requests? Just to cloak up. Again, depends on the pattern and how much fabric. The cloak usually goes to the ground, so it's a lot more fabric than a coat. Unless it's a cape. Oh, thank you so much, Debbie. I really appreciate that. Oh, man. Thanks so much, Ryan. I hope to do another one of these sometime soon um, when I can find a quick pattern that we can do together. Next time, I'll see if I can advertise it as the sing along, sew along, and we'll we'll bring in some music. Thank you, thank you, Kayla. Go subscribe to McNerdy Makes as well because she is awesome. Whew. Also, she has little baby kitties, and you need to see the little baby kitties that she has on her channel because they're like brand new just newborn kitties the flower sack fabric is findable actually if you go to kayla's channel kayla lives in the middle of farm country nebraska and found dozens and dozens and dozens of feed sacks in her basement and made pillows out of them and she's going to be sending some to me and i'm going to be making stuff out of a bunch of old uh uh old feed sacks as well um Thank you so much, Mona. Yeah, th I, that's the first time anyone has described me as Higili. So that's awesome. Thanks, Casca. Thanks, Joelle. Thanks, Sue. Yes, you need to send me the flower sacks and the patterns. <laughs> and I'll send you more Arbutus bark. Yeah. It, you know, I've never been copyright striked when I'm singing myself because they look for recordings and not for songs. If you're covering, it's usually fine. Uh, fun thing that if you want to make your own music, uh, they look exactly for the uh, the patterns in uh, in pre recorded stuff. So if you record it yourself, you're usually just fine with all of that. In case you're wondering about the weirdness of copyright, also doing opera is great because nothing in opera is in copyright. All right, I guess that is all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been an absolute pleasure and a million laughs. I hope you all join me again. It was wonderful chatting with you and singing for you. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them in the comments. And I hope to see you all next time. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, hope you take care of yourselves. Again, stay happy and healthy. Take care of each other. And we will see you soon. Bye.